Hi, I'm John Payne and welcome to Business as Unusual. Business as Unusual is a weekly session where we deep dive into how the likes of you and I as, and Carrie in this case, as uh, business owners, marketers and salespeople can stay productive, profitable and at peace in the pandemic and whatever comes after. This episode is all about digital PR and how, among other things, it can help your SEO efforts. Our guide to all of this is Carrie Rose. Hi, Carrie. Hello, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie is the founder of Rise at Seven, a creative SEO agency based in Sheffield, the steel city here in the UK. Carrie, tell us, how did you get your start in what it is you did what, what what came first for you pr or seo or what so i guess it was kind of like a mix i studied at uni in like what 2011 at university of leeds and um, my course was new media which at the time so i was really interested in everything digital and everything new but there was only like two universities that, that did that course uh -huh. and so it was everything that was creative digital from i even did this of like animation to web design web development so i learned how to do code which was a nightmare i ended up <laughs> I know I even paid some kid to do it for me once um, and like, I'm not a good coder um, but yeah we did you know the typical kind of advertising PR marketing um, and bits of SEO as well but if I'm completely honest the module on SEO is nothing like what it is today um, and <laughs> yeah so I guess the PR really started um, creating stories telling stories with a bit of digital in there and um, but yeah it was when I started in agency that I really started to understand what SEO meant right Right. And um, so uh, I, uh, being an SEO myself, um, uh, I struggle. In fact, I was on a call with my mates at the weekend, like so many of us now, right? On Zoom calls with our mates having a drink on a Saturday. And <laughs> my, my oldest friend, I think, probably I've known him for, gosh, uh, 40 something years. Um, God, we're both really old. Um, He's and he, well, I've done work for him. We, Noisy Little Monkey has worked for his business and he still was saying, I have no idea what it is that you do. How do you explain to your friends what you do? Oh God, to be honest, it depends who I'm trying to impress. <laughs> 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 like if it's some boy, I'll, you know, I'll say some, some something fancy, something to do with Google. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I usually just go down with, you know, when you do advertising and you're basically trying to get people to buy from you, I do that, but website. So I'm trying to get everybody to come to our website instead of competitors. I just typically go down that and they're like, yeah, but how do you do that? I'm like, so many things, There's so many things. <laughs> but I was like, mainly what my bag is, is, the PR side, so creating stories to drive traffic to the website, basically. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I, I, and what I really like is the fact that basically you go, we do this and they say, well, how do you do that? And effectively, it's much easier to, with yeah. a glass of wine in your hand, go, it's basically magic. I'll tell you about it one day if you need me to. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So um, uh, just to, as a reminder for those of you who've not been along before, um, and for Karen, Carrie, because I'm sure she uh, is running um, Rise at Seven, which is an absolutely fantastic business. And we'll talk a bit more about that in a second. Um, doesn't have time to watch all of these things. Um, every episode of um, a Business as Unusual, we go through a, a, a standard agenda, which is right now, businesses, so businesses like mine and businesses like you, the viewer, um, businesses like your customers, if you're selling to them, have got an uncertainty about money. Um, they've got discretionary budgets have been all but um, killed and we're talking to people all the time um, who well not all the time but we had two in the last week where just little businesses we thought we were over the line with now said that like budgets of a thousand pounds a month were needing to be signed off by Japan and it's like oh whoa we didn't even know you were Japanese in cred um, so and then there's that uncertainty thing so we want to um, address the uncertainty in the market and the we're in a pandemic um you know and you, while we are probably make relatively light of the uncertainty actually you know people are dying and we need to stay probably locked down for a bit longer so we need to address that um and we'll talk about what's the opportunity um coming out the other side or even right now because we're seeing opportunities i was just saying to carrie um katie roberts who's um in charge of sales for noise little monkey um just got a deal signed today which is unusual for marketing companies, a, a decent size one. We're loving it. Um, so yeah, um, 
that's what we're going to go through. Um, Carrie and I have had a quick chat about it, so hopefully that's not come as too much a surprise to her. Um, before we jump into it, um, you might be wondering why Carrie's along talking about this stuff. She clearly is bright and bubbly and intelligent and clever, um, but um, I, I think it might give us a bit more colour if you tell us about your frankly amazing agency, Carrie, which I'm tremendously jealous of. I remember when you set it up, and I'll, I'll be a bit confessional here, you put out this tweet and I'm like that, ah, oh, this lovely girl who's 26 or something, 25 probably when you set it up, right? And I just immediately went to pretty girl, old white guy syndrome. How can she know what the hell she's doing? Fast forward like a year, I'm like that, oh wow, I really need to work for Carrie one day. <laughs> and now I'm just like, oh, she, I'm, I would like just to catch hold of her coattails as she sails into the stratosphere. Um, and I'm sure you think I'm blowing smoke up your ass a little bit. Um, I'm not, I think you're great. And I think your business is great. Um, and uh, I've told you that loads of times. So um, hopefully that comes as no surprise. Tell us a bit about Rise at Seven, what it is you do, how it is you help businesses, that kind of stuff. Yeah, sure. So um, I started Rise at Seven, which is a um, creative SEO agency back in June last year. Well, I think it's like May, June. Was it um, only June? Yeah, not long Because I've gone through all of those emotions, jealousy, hatred, <laughs> and now a bit of jealousy and awe in under a year. <laughs> well, how do you think? Like, honestly, it's been crazy because not, not going to lie, we did our research and I don't know if you know this stat, but it's like, one no 60 percent of startups fail in their first year so not yeah. only do we battle that statistic <laughs> we also battle through be brexit and the global pandemic like it's not been easy for me <laughs> no jesus creepers that's brilliant though we, uh, so we st noisy little monkey started in 2008 in the middle of a recession and i always thought oh, yeah. that makes us a bit more whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> yeah. you've got you're you're even more able to rope a dope and get around stuff because jesus uh, I've definitely bulldozed through it, I think. I've, I've really gone big and gone out and I've, I've not quietened down since, but I've, I feel like I've had to. Um, but just to give you an overview, yeah, so SEO agency, um, we're based in Sheffield, but we've actually opened a London office now. We did that in January. It was only small with one member of staff, but now we're up to three. Yeah, three in London. Nice. Um, so, which is amazing. So everything from technical SEO to content to digital PR and um, touching on a bit of social media as well. That's what we do. Um, we've got 20 members of staff now and working with amazing clients like you can see on your screen now. Very, very lucky to be working with those brands. You're probably thinking, how the hell has she done that in 10 months? I thought the exact same. I feel very, very lucky. Um, but yeah, I, I guess what we've done is try to kind of what I said, this is what I said when I started the agency. I want to make SEO sexy. That's what I said. I was like, right. I want to make it sexy. Um, I kind of go for these freedom ideas and, and kind of target brands like these that want something a bit different. Um, so we marketed ourselves as an agency that's different um, by coming up with a bit out there ideas and things like that and different strategies. So yeah, so that's us. 10 months later down the line, still going, surviving, <laughs> holding I up. Believe, I can't believe you're only 10 months old as a, as a business. Amazing. Yeah. Absolutely yep. amazing. Um, uh, 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 that was it. It was you saying, I want to make SEO sexy. That's what got my back up. Because look. <laughs> I'm like, well. I knew I'd pissed off a few people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was one of them and you did the right thing because it needed shaking up and you've done, you and Stephen have done an absolutely amazing job. Um, for those of you who haven't been along before, um, the reason Carrie and I are willing to talk on this is because we do this little advert at the beginning. Um, uh, so Rise at Seven are a fantastic SEO agency. Um, Noisy Little Monkey um, are a digital marketing and CRM agency. Bit of SEO, bit of um, uh, 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 HubSpot, um, bit of sales training. So uh, yeah, uh, that's us. That's enough about Noisy Little Monkey because you've probably been before and frankly, I feel embarrassed um, constantly harping on about how wonderful we are. Um, so what I'm trying to do is find a poll where you can tell us about you. So um, I'm launching a poll. I'm going to put it on your screen, Carrie. You don't have to vote, but you'll be able to see what um, the questions are I'm asking. So guys, if you could look at your screen and just um, look at your screen. See, I can tell you're already all looking at your emails. Um, but if you could look at your screen and um, hopefully you can see a poll on your screen. Claire, tell me if you can't see it. Claire is the moderator in the chat. Everybody. I can see it. Um, yeah. Brilliant. There are some people. Um, 
So uh, uh, what we're asking, Carrie, is how big is the company that people work for? What, dis what most describes their role? What describes their level of seniority? And what's their relationship with SEO? And the reason we are asking those questions, and thank you so much everybody for voting, is so that Carrie and I can modify our conversation to fit the answers that you are putting in that poll. I'm gonna leave it open for a bit longer so we get a bit more of that while I tell you if you've already filled the poll in about um, a couple of things that Noisy Little Monkey have got going on at the minute. One is we've got loads of free resources on our website. The team at Noisy Little Monkey created um, a lot of free resources that can, um, <laughs> sorry Jules, there is no in-between between expert and beginner on SEO. Um, SEOs, um, in my opinion, are like drag racer en engines. They're either idling or going a million miles an hour. Um, no, sorry, You're, we should have one between there. Um, but yeah, free resources for marketers and uh, uh, business owners and salespeople. Come along, grab those from Noisy Little Monkey at the link you can see on your screen. Um, the other thing that we're doing is um, we're a HubSpot Diamond partner. We've created an exclusive deal for HubSpot where we will onboard you for free for 90 days because money, uncertainty, right? That's a real problem. Hey, there's an opportunity there as well to get ahead of your competitors. Um, we'll do it free for 90 days because my wife helped me found this business. In fact, she's a co-founder. That's not why it works. She's a co-founder and uh, she's made us profitable. Right. So I'm going to end polling. So we have primarily, um, Carrie, just to let you know, we have a few people who are between jobs right now and there's absolutely no shame in that. Um, and uh, we're glad to have you along. Thanks for coming. We have um, mainly the, the largest group is either small businesses, naught to five people, um, or naught, that would be a silly thing, uh, one to five people, I suppose. And then between uh, 11 and 100 people, um, not so many. Wow, that's weird. In the last few, we've had quite a lot of people coming from really big businesses, but this is a bit more medium-sized enterprises. Welcome, guys. That's what we like. Primarily people are in marketing or PR okay. um, and they are mainly managers with a little bit of execs. Got some people in the house who work for agencies and we're delighted to have you along as well. Um, uh, uh, Carrie and I, when we first spoke about doing this call, we're talking about how um, this is an industry where people really love to share their knowledge and share it between agencies. And in fact, I'm in a WhatsApp group with Carrie's business partner, Stephen, um, and uh, we share loads of ideas about running a, a, an SEO and a technical agency all the time. So this is sort of this is why this works, because we love sharing ideas. Carrie is perhaps even more passionate about sharing ideas than I am, which I like. Um, and then primarily people are describing themselves as a beginner in SEO. Um, we've got 25% of people are experts. Most people are beginners. No one, no one doesn't understand what SEO is, great, which is great. But 8% of people, and I love this, um, uh, have, are still the sort of people who are getting reports sent to them that they don't understand. Mm -hmm. um, I see that all the time. <laughs> um, uh, so before we jump into our... Uh, uh, what we can be doing. Let's look at a bit of context. Um, and Carrie, I'll be really interested in uh, your feedback on this, uh, particularly the second one, which I think was the one that you were tweeting about earlier in the week. But um, this is a uh, study done at the end of April um, by a chap called Brian Dean from Backlinko, um, who are a, a, a SEO software kind of business. Um, and their study of about 11.8 million domains, yeah, said that authoritative domains tend to rank higher in Google's search results. Now, to me, an authoritative domain, given that we've got so many beginner SEOs on the call, an authoritative domain is one that has a, I would suggest, Carrie, and I'd be interested to see what you think, a trusted, uh, sorry, a, uh, a varied backlink profile, um, that's relative that's clean so not from porn sites and gambling sites and all of that kind of stuff particularly if you're not in porn or gambling um and um uh, from ideally from a number of them and from some authoritative sites like trusted domains and companies that you might have heard of bbc channel 4 for example although those are kind of the pinnacle down lower you've got kind of well and daily mail but then you've kind of got ones you don't understand but that does that what would how would you describe an authoritative domain carrie does that make sense or 
Yeah, makes sense to me. Very, very similar. Um, I think I've actually seen quite a few people debate this, which is good. I like a debate, if I'm completely yeah. honest. I'm so on social. Um, I don't, I'm not too fun of the trolls. The trolls aren't too great. Um, I, don't, I learned to love them. Um, but there's been a lot of debate going on with this. Um, but I think the overall um, gist basically is, um, yeah, it, it's, this has always kind of been said and people know that, you know, if you have an authority domain linking to you, um, then you're going to rank higher. So the only kind of, I guess, caveat on that one is every single website is different. So you could be more competitive in car insurance than you are in, you know, selling hot tubs, as an example. Um, yeah. well, everything's different um, and not to follow everything. But yeah, I'd I, I mirror exactly what you just said. Cool. Cool. Phew. Thank God. <laughs> um, uh, that is... for about an hour, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly yeah if it was just you and i on the call i think this <laughs> next one we could just we could be here for ages which i really love i love this stat I, it, it does kind of lend itself to all sorts of misinterpretation i believe but pages with more backlinks tend to rank higher than those pages with fl fewer black backlinks what do you what do you say to that Ms. rose <laughs> this is like my favorite, favorite debate. So it kind of goes like quality versus quantity debate. So I guess in PR, we're all about quality. You know, you want to get links from the likes of BBC or Daily Mail or Forbes, the ones with the high authority, um, rather than getting 100 links from, from different websites that are maybe kind of spam or international yeah. or porn size. This is basically not necessarily going into the details of, of quality here. So this is basically saying, the more links, the better. Um, this is probably one of the stats that caused a lot of debate on Twitter. Maybe they threw it in there for debate um, to create that. Um, maybe, maybe. But one thing that I guess I would argue, or at least provide some sort of advice on this one, um, is again, every single website is different. Every single keyword is different. So say if you're trying to rank for an extremely competitive keyword, you more than likely will need a lot more backlinks to that page. But then there may be some keywords that are not as competitive and you might only need a handful. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of things that I've done recently where I built maybe four links to that um, section of the website and it started to rank you know, in the top three. Um, and yeah. so it just needed a handful of links. So I think again, yeah, this is one of the most debatable, but I think quantity is a thing. I don't think people should ignore it. I think, you know, the more links, the better. Um, but it all depends on competition of keywords and things like that. Um, but definitely quality should have been a focus on this one. Yeah, yeah, agreed, agreed. Wow, this, this never happens. SEO's agreeing on, a, on like a backlink explanation. Yeah, agreed so wholeheartedly. It's, and for me, quality trumps quantity, but you always want quantity, right? Yeah, like but, uh, not coming from from dog shit websites they're, yeah. they're coming from okay websites great but yeah. you still need and this is why i'm so delighted to have you on this call you still need those quality ones to re like make an impact in pretty much any industry you can't get by with just you know 15 links from your mate's window glazing website exactly one way that i always put it is see if you got a link from the telegraph that's basically saying like saying telegraph recommends your business and if the Telegraph is giving you another link and another link and another link because your content is so good that they're linking to it on an ongoing basis, that's basically saying, we really recommend this website. So to Google, that's a stronger kind of message or signal to say, okay, even if it's repeated links on the same domain, such as Telegraph, that's basically saying, this website is really, really good at what I'm linking to them for. Um, so yeah, so this is often a debate as well, but yeah, I think, um, not to ignore that sort of stuff as well. Um, yeah, absolutely. That's a, that is, um, Claire's just put in the, in the chat. That really is a great explanation. She's worked with me for like six years. And <laughs> she's, never had a, she's never had it that good. Um, uh, it, so here's the thing. We've got some beginners and some people who get some reports they don't understand on the call. And yeah. apologies to the SEO experts, but you were here once as well. So you're going to be very patient, I suspect, with the question that I'm going to ask Gary, which is, <laughs> And believe me, Carrie, if you get stuck, I'll start. I'll go get a whiteboard. We'll be fine. <laughs> what is a link? And we're really talking about backlinks. Is that right? Yeah. So say if you are reading the Daily Mail and the Daily Mail are talking about, I don't know, car accidents in the UK going on the rise or something like that. And they link to a study that was run by GoCompare. A link is that kind of bluey, bluey core, I think they usually are on publications like that. Um, bluey URL that 
points to a different website, you can click on it and it sends you there. What that link does is not only sends users to another website, but it passes value. It's the most easiest way I explain it to my mom, my friends, whoever, is that kind of passes points. It's Daily Mail saying, here, here's some points for being really good and creating that nice piece of content that I recommend. Um, so the more links, the more points you get in a, in a really crap way of explaining it, but simple for people to understand. That's, that's brilliant. <laughs> we, we actually had to, um, someone um, uh, uh, raise their hand there, which was um, uh, uh, Fiona. I didn't catch your surname because I clicked a button and went, wow, someone raised their hand. I've not seen that before. Um, uh, uh, we're all learning new stuff. Every day is a school day, particularly for this old dog. Um, but yeah, so someone raised their hand. Throw your question, any questions, throw them in the chat. Um, Claire from Noisy Little Monkey is on the call. She will throw them at me and Carrie if they slide by us. Um, she claims to be ready and waiting, which is good because when I spoke to her this morning, she was still in her pajamas, um, uh, which was good because while we were on the call with Carrie, she was putting her makeup on and I had moved my breakfast out of camera shot. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, how do you get the Telegraph, for example, to put a link to your page? Well, I think we're going to come to that, right, Gary? <laughs> That's the whole deal, Jules. We're going to come to that kind of stuff in a sec. So um, uh, 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 keep throwing the questions in. We'll cover them as we come to them. Um, I think the, the, the third stat that, we, that I want to talk about before we get on to actually, we're going to have like 10 minutes per topic perhaps going forward is that comprehensive content strongly correlates with higher rankings. So comprehensive, co so the first thing that we've got to do because there's beginner SEOs in the room is do the old con uh, uh, correlation versus causation thing. So the, my explanation for, of how correlation is not causation is when the sun comes, comes out, you, and when, remember when we were, weren't docked in our own houses and we could walk up and down the streets, um, but when the sun comes out, you see much, loads of people with ice creams, just loads of them. So that's kind of correlative, right? But if you get loads of people to have ice creams, it doesn't magically make the sun come out. So it doesn't cause, one thing doesn't necessarily cause the other. So um, uh, 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 having comprehensive content, content won't immediately guarantee that your page will rank more highly than other people's with less content on it. But it strongly correlates that those that do seem to often rank higher. Um, uh, uh, and it's just so for me it's always been a good habit to if you want a page to rank and it's not just some sort of kind of halfway info page that you're writing um you want to seem like an authority on the topic you've got to be writing or creating enough content so this is a video but we'll have a transcript there'll be loads and loads of stuff underneath here which makes this relatively comprehensive content um uh, uh, carrie do you see this resonate does this resonate with you do you see this happen or do, is it yeah, so it's the exact same. So I was talking to Stephen about this earlier um, and we're saying like Google is always kind of like when it comes to links specifically, Google's always like, you know, links matter, but not that much. And all the SEOs are like, bullshit, Google, you're a liar. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but when it comes to content, they've always said compre comprehensive content is a thing. So what that means is kind of not just answering one query. So if you're writing maybe an answer to a question, it's really going into depth about that, about that topic. Um, it's, um, it's, it's making sure that every single answer that somebody could have, or, you know, the, the second answer, the third, que second question, sorry, and the third question, as long as a user reads your piece of content and, and knows the answer all, all in one space, because if, if someone has to click X because they haven't got the answer to their question then Google's going to go, okay, that weren't useful for a user, so won't rank it. So yeah. Yeah, of content is, is definitely important. Yeah. Cool. Excellent, 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 excellent. So, couple of questions. Um, first one from Joy Ann. Hey, Joy. Um, uh, is it good to link from, so let's say the Telegraph links to, uh, uh, they're saying that the um, best looking man over 50 in <laughs> SEO is John Payne of Noisy Little Monkey. And the word John Payne on the Telegraph website links to noisylittlemonkey.com forward slash about us forward slash John Payne. Is it a good idea from an SEO perspective from, for me to link back to the page on the Telegraph? 
No. So historically, people used to do that. What they used to do is, I'll do your backhand deal. If you link to me, I'll link to you. Well, that was really kind of seen as a negative um, thing and a bad signal for Google. So people used to get penalized for that, only in the masses. So obviously, if you seem to do that quite a lot, get links from, one, from them and then linking back. Um, it could look like that. However, if it's natural to link back, then do. Um, one thing that we actually do um, quite often, so say if we have an expert um, covered on the Telegraph um, sharing some advice, we might include that advice on our website. Like, look, we've been featured in the Telegraph and that is a signal to Google that, okay, this expert is an authority. They're, they've been featured in the Telegraph. So we do that maybe once or twice. But yeah. if you're doing it every single time Google will see that as ah, oh, it looks as if you're kind of doing a bit of a backhand deal here. You link to me, I link to you. So yeah, I wouldn't do that every single time, only when it's needed. Uh, only when the Telegraph describes you as or me in this case. <laughs> they describe you as it. That the things will have taken an interesting turn in lockdown. Um, <laughs> you'll have aged greatly. Um, so uh, and and another one. Um, and maybe you'll cover this, um, but let's see. If you think we're going to cover it in the discussion, we'll just move on. Um, but we've got a question um, saying in boring industries, which is also, <laughs> I love boring industries because they normally pay us more. <laughs> why, do you, why do you love them? Because they appreciate an amazing idea that's different. Like that was, I started in PR and SEO on the small websites that, you know, sold, I don't know, garden tools. And there's like, right, come up with an idea that's going to get you on a daily mail. And that's what made me like, what's the word, grind. I had to yeah. grind for that. Um, so yeah, I like them because you can deliver amazing results for a small business. And God, they, they appreciate it more than big brands. And yeah. they, understand them, they get much more value. Yeah, yeah. So in a boring industry, for instance, employment law training. I don't know whether that's particularly related to PF, who's put the question, but I suspect. Um, do you have a go-to for building links or is that something we might cover as we go through or? Um, I guess I can touch it. What do you mean by, oh, I guess I can't ask him. Um, go-to. There's, there's different ways for employment law. Like there's so the specific sites that I would target. Um, there's a lot of employment journalists within the Sun, the email, Telegraph, Guardian, things like that. But then there's even your niche sites, your career sites. Um, there's recruitment today and, and publications like that, Business Insider even. So it's thinking of looking at what stories that they cover and then what value can add especially now. So like I saw an employment brand um, recently, they had data of, you know, what sort of jobs were on the market right now. And it was like, you know, X percent was in um, finance or X percent was in digital or whatever. And they could show what industries were thriving over the ones that weren't. And that yeah. was a story in itself by using their own data. So yeah, yeah it's understanding that really. Yeah, yeah. So there isn't really a go-to, is there? It's being creative, I guess. Um, uh, yeah, there's not really a go-to. Cool. Okay, so let's talk about money. Um, the, the, and I think this is going to be interesting because just because of some of the stuff you you and I discussed this morning. Um, uh, but the, you know, what sort what sort of assets and investment do we need to make a big splash with a digital PR campaign? It's it's obviously I'm going to be playing devil's advocate. Obviously, I need a huge PR agency. I need a photo for a, a photographer from PA Photo Call. Yeah. I need all of that shit, right? And it, <laughs> no so you don't need any of that so one thing that i really really share as long as you create a good a good story you don't need anything and um, to get the links is making sure that you have some on your site so if you have a blog a content hub um, a guide section make sure you get content on the site that that people can link to and just create something that's newsworthy and um, it's, it's it's not that difficult to spend some time going through the media and understanding what store, sort of stories that they're covering so yeah. A good tip that I can give you and one thing that I looked at myself is I went on Google a couple of well when all this started kicking off and I just typed in how to and then clicked on news in the last week and then you could see the amount of stories like how to was getting picked up and the sun was covering how to make your own McDonald's at home or how to um, spruce up your CV they're looking for advice of how to spruce up your CV um, or how to so you could literally get inspiration I actually wrote a status on my Twitter and LinkedIn about this. And I kind of like listed all these how-tos, what people are clearly writing about on national paper. And they're looking for 
content for you, from you guys, like from experts and data or anything like that. So we did that. So one of our clients, although like it sounds like they've got a big budget, but you've probably seen them in the news for going into administration this week, was Kath Kidson. <laughs> so Kath Kidson is one of our clients. We're still working with them despite everything that's going off. Um, and one thing that we created was how to, um, is it Easter, how to make your own Easter eggs at home. We created just a blog post as five steps. We just took some pictures of some how to make them, put them on our blog um, and emailed the journalists at several publications. And we landed on the Daily Mail. I think it was on like Hello Magazine and a couple of others. So simplicity, like we didn't spend much time doing that. Don't tell Cav Kids and that, but we didn't. <laughs> like it was the most simplest campaign and piece of content that can get links. And it, it's easy for you guys to do the same. So yeah. You you don't need anything big and creative. And a, and a proper brand isn't paying for your time, Carrie. They're paying for your creativity and brilliance. They're paying for all the years it took me to learn to be this good. <laughs> yeah. I, I think was, I, I want to pick up on something there, um, oh. which is um, you... So, because I think this is just... I was so delighted when you said it, and I just want to check that, I was, that I'm, I'm hearing you right. When, you, when, the, when the lockdown started or the pandemic started, you went to Google... Yeah. And you typed in how to, and then clicked on the news stories. Yeah, and then I selected on, on Google, you can select in the past week, and it just shows you every single news story that's hit the headlines. And usually Google pulls through, you know, most authoritative media. So Metro, The Sun, or Express, or Daily Star. And they could see every single story that Jim... And I don't know if you can go on Google Trends, it's a free tool. I typed in how to on that, and you could see that how to content was on the rise. So I just, honestly, I think I freshed out about 20 how-to how stories. Um, <laughs> and um, so there's one I actually tweeted about this morning and I created a blog post of how to see the UK, I think it was like 14 UK attractions um, from, from the comfort of your sofa. So obviously you can't go out and explore the UK, like Buckingham Palace or anything like that right now. But when I did some research, you, there's free virtual tours online, um, YouTube videos, things like that. So I just created a blog post of 14 ways to see all of these UK attractions, link into the like 360 videos or, or YouTube or whatever it was, and then push that to press. And we got that, to be honest, that went insane. But I think that was one of our first pieces that went live during this pandemic and it just kind of caught the attention we landed on like lonely planet and um, they linked to us uh, through that um there was like express and a couple of others um but yeah it, it did really really well but that's what i mean by very very simple stories can get pick up and links um, and it's using what you guys know you've you've started a business or your clients have got a business with experts in what they do use them yeah Brilliant, um, brilliant. I, I, so I'm so interrupt. We've had a quest. We've had a question in the chat from Anne Harrod, which related to that was how how do you contact those papers, Carrie? Do you have like the email addresses of specific journalists? Do you have like a little black book that you've built up? If you were starting from scratch, like how would you go about doing that? Thank yeah. you, Harrod. Um, mainly email them and um, to get their email addresses gonna be difficult and um, so because of GDPR and stuff a lot of emails addresses from journalists are hidden behind maybe a tool so there's a couple of tools to look into and um, Gorkana Gorkana is massive and it's expensive it's probably the best I would say in the world so if you've got money then have a look into it but if you haven't got as much money maybe look at things like Rocks Hill um, or a news tip and they will give you um, for maybe a small fee or even just uh, just they will give you the, those email addresses but it's understanding who is going to contact this because obviously I don't just email like hello at dailymail.com I will look at <laughs> who covers this sort of topics maybe a travel journalist and then I'll find their name find their email address and then email them like hi I've got a story I think you might like I did this research da, 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 da. Um, I've actually done a blog post on how I email them um, just type in on Google after you finish with this to type in Carrie Rose Brighton SEO and I think the, the blog post comes up and it's got literally screenshots of how I email journalists, you know, how I write it, etc. So that should help you guys. Um, but yeah, email is the best way um, and using tools to hunt their email addresses down. But if you can't get access to tools, a lot of journalists do have their email addresses within their Twitter bios. So it means being a hunter, it means doing some digging, but uh, it's worth it. Brilliant answer. Brilliant answer. Um, we've got some other questions that we'll, we'll, we'll come to. Um, 
uh, uh, which is which are actually better than ones I've got written down. Right. So you definitely come to those. Um, I the 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 thing I really like is so far, apart from when we talked about how to get journalists' emails, and then you said actually most of them have got them on Twitter. Just find out, yeah. find a byline, find their Twitter account, find their LinkedIn account, hustle. Yeah, and you'll you've probably got to hustle. That's why my job isn't that easy. You've got to hustle. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, but 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 none of those tools are. None of those tools cost money, right? You've got Google Trends, you, you used Google, and then you're, then you're using free tools or free platforms to, to, and some hustle, some, some sweat. Um, uh, if, like, even if you don't do that, one thing that I always advise people to do is test it out. So um, I couldn't find a Daily Mail journalist the other day. Their email address weren't on any of the tools that I used. They weren't on Twitter or anything like that. So do you know what? I, was like, I had a look online and I found another person's email and it was just, you know, john.smith at dailymail.com. I was like, just try that. So I typed their name, like Tom, Tom, I don't know, Smith or whatever, at dailymail.com to see if it worked. It went through. I was like, oh, I got it right. So I just guessed. <laughs> yeah, I love it when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> love that. Like first name, dot, last name at Daily Mail or wherever it is and then dot com. It's nearly always that sort of sequence. Yeah, so, yeah find and- someone similar. And then, make, and then, yes, absolutely brilliant. And um, and Harrod has in fact put the link to your um, blog f- about your rise, at, uh, your Brighton SEO talk in the chat. So that's brilliant. Um, uh, I've got a couple of quick ones. Um, what's the uh, etiquette of sending something to more than one publication, Carrie? Um, what I usually do is email one person at one publication. So um, for those that don't know, within a publication, you might even be seeing like 30, 40 people that work there. Um, only email once to begin with um, and then chase them up two days later. If they still don't open your email or respond, try someone else. Um, I do all the time. I've even I've emailed four or five people um, in a week once just because I know maybe two of them kind of aren't working this week or two of them um, might be interested. And they usually talk between each other. They're always like sat next to each other. Well, right now they're not. Um, (laughs) Which probably works in our favours. They're not talking as much. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, um, just just stagger it. Don't don't hammer them all at once. Just try one for a couple of days. And if that doesn't work, then try someone else. But if you are going for two or three weeks and you've literally not got any reply, just give it a break and, and move on to the next publication. Yeah. Okay. So just bin it. Yeah. Oh yeah. hundred percent. If you, no one's picking it up, leave it. Yeah. One thing that I would advise you to use, um, I was going to mention it later on, but Buzzstream, um, if you're a freelancer or if you kind of have got limited budget, I'm sure Buzzstream is like, no joke. I use it as when I did freelance, I think it's like 25 quid a month or something like that. So it's not that expensive. But Bushstream tracks all of your emails. There are other tools for this, but I know that it can create a lot of spam and stuff. So Bushstream is the best in the industry. But it tracks all of your emails that you send to journalists. It banks all of their addresses, so you're not having to go and find them all again. So it creates a bit of like a black book for you. Yeah. And it shows you whether they've opened it. So if I email a journalist and it's a, it literally goes like, ping, they've opened your email. I'm like, oh, nice. Or if they don't open it, then it's like, oh, okay, I know they haven't seen it, so I can just try them again. Yeah. Um, that's really good just to see like and especially if it goes ping 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 you can see them opening it five or six times that's usually because they're covering the story and they're reading it to get the information so yeah. it, it's quite addictive watching it though but it's good yeah yeah absolutely love it love it and um, we've got a couple more questions but i'm gonna we'll move on to uncertainty and we'll catch them in there um sophie nightingale uh, anonymous attendee how the hell did you get in um amazing <laughs> Uh, and um, uh, Joy will actually Joy and um, uh, 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 Lewis Gammon Phillips, beautiful name, Lewis, um, have got a similar question. So we'll come to that in uncertainty. Um, oh, and Jessica Pardo is recommending Streak, another is another tool that she uses for monitoring yeah. Google Mail. Um, thanks, Jessica. Great, great tip. So, um, in, so we, uh, we, we've covered black books, we've covered um, a, a kind of hustling and all of that kind of stuff. Uncertain times, um, we've got, um, you know, everything's crazy, crazy, COVID owns the space. How do we get permission from the boss to do something, something stupid? Or does the fact that we don't know when we're coming out of lockdown matter? I mean, what, 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 how do we cope with this, Carrie? Yeah, um, so it's interesting because com- to be completely honest, my opinion or uh, strategy has completely changed every week, I would say. So when this 
I know, it's crazy. When this all first kicked off, not going to lie, I, was, I remember writing a, a status about LinkedIn. I said, you know, think long term, think about when this all comes back to normal, plan for then, because some people are going to go quiet. Some brands are literally going to not invest in marketing. So, um, and then when they come back kind of alive again, when the world starts ticking, they're going to go hard and you need to make sure that you're going hard just as big as them. Um, and I remember saying that, I remember saying like, you know, plan for them. And I got that wrong. Um, at first, that's because I didn't expect this to go on for that long. That's yeah. why. Um, so then it changed um, completely. So you will have to, you do have to think short term and long term now. You have to think, okay, what can I get ready for next week? What can I get ready for the week after? We don't know when things are going to get go live again. So what uh, in terms of kind of getting outdoors and people buying products again and getting in the high street, etc. So the best advice is is think short and long. I know it's draining. I'm drained. Like I'm absolutely drained. I was saying to John before, I was like. I feel as if I've got like 40 clients or something crazy. And I said, I feel as if I'm saving or like supporting 40 businesses right now, as well as my own. And I'm just like, it's, it's hard work. Um, but yeah, you've, I think the best thing I can advise um, overall. So like a good example is the other day I was driving through my hometown near my mum's house. And I saw this um, car garage, this car garage, just a, a small family run business. And he does really well. I know because he drives around in a nice Mercedes every single week. Um, yeah. so well but all of his cars in his car garage was just full of dust i was like you haven't gone out and cleaned them and i, was, and I remember thinking straight away in my head and all of all the shutters were down so I was, he has closed up he has not done anything he's yeah. probably not done any marketing he's not even cleaned the cars that he's going to start selling again in a couple of you know a couple of weeks hopefully time and that straight away kind of like puts fear in me because those businesses that are going on pause and resting are going to be the ones that are going to struggle so much to get back on the on the wheel really i actually saw a linkedin status about it the other day there was like run whilst your competitors are resting and it's so true like take advantage of the fact that a lot of brands are they haven't got the money or they haven't got the time to kind of um, go big. So that's the way to say to your boss, do you want to stand out in a, in a market that has actually gone quite quiet and um, mm. go quiet depending on your industry. Like travel is an example and um, probably gone very, very quiet unless it's negative news. Um, but yeah, it's, it's keep going and remain positive and, and definitely run whilst, whilst everyone's um, being silent, but it does require, investment. it does require, you know, getting your boss on board. Um, but yeah. 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 I, I, you know what that's so it's been a repeated motif in this. Um, yeah. uh, it, we've only done four episodes. Every one of them has done, you know what the, the, the brands that come out of this well are the brands that, that continue to try. Yeah. Now, obviously if you're not in charge and it gets put into liquidation or whatever, then you, hey, you, you've done your best, but actually um, uh, 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 many of us, you know, uh, Alan Thorpe, when we had him on a couple of weeks ago, was talking about us, us people in marketing have to work hard because we're the people who are putting food on the table for the people who are shipping stuff or delivering the services. Without us pushing now, when we come out of this, it's going to be the dirty car syndrome. Every, yeah. No one's going to want our cars because they're covered in dust. And We've got to make sure that those... Yeah, it's exactly it. There was a good, um, I wrote a good um, example on this um, as a note. There was this farmer that I follow on Facebook. He had like, what, 200 followers or something? Um, he's now got like over 100,000. What he did is, I don't know if you know, but it's lambing season right now. So all the sheep are lambing. And obviously people love to see that. People loved it. So he, he did a Facebook Live showing this baby lamb being born. And then obviously he had like 100 sheep giving birth to these lambs. So every single morning he does a Facebook Live. He's got over 100,000 followers now. He's, oh, man. Yeah, he's landed on the BBC, local press. He didn't put any money behind it. It's just creating cool content because he's showing that his farm is still running and he's got some nice story and nice content to show. He didn't put yeah. like, no budget or anything, but it just shows them, I don't know, the first thing that people are going to do is, I don't know if he's got a farm shop, but they're going to go and see him because they want to go and meet him because he's now a famous person on Facebook. So Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, that's beautiful. And frankly, waking up to a baby lamb. Is great. <laughs> Quick aside, I have woken up with a lamb in the bed. When I was a shepherd, we uh, got our lambs to um, give birth uh, outside of the normal period because you can put uh, 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 you can uh, inject them with um, estrogen, and it makes them come into season a few months early, which means that your lambs get to the shops just before Easter. So you make all the money. Great stuff. But we had a lamb born around Christmas time. It was really cold. 
Um, its mum wasn't very well. It needed to be kept warm and our heating had broken. So I slept with it in my bed <laughs> for the first night of its life. And then my mum was telling all of her friends, yeah, my, my son's a shepherd. He sleeps with the sheep. And I'm like that. No, don't put it like that. <laughs> what, I did, what I did was an altruistic thing. Not, uh, yeah, anyway, brilliant. I, I, that's, that's really good. Um, we've got, so some of the questions we've got are, and maybe this plays to uncertainty in a different way, but one of the questions we've got a few versions of is, do you ever pay to get published, Carrie? No, never. Brill. <laughs> there you what? go. I can do it for free. It's all about creating that cool story. Um, yeah, never. Years ago I did. So when I first worked for my first ever agency, when I graduated, that's what we used to do is paid for links. But Google penalizes you for that sort of stuff now. It's Well, I guess Google doesn't penalize you anymore, really. It just ignores it. So you're spending money and it's not going to move the needle in any way. So yeah, yeah. I don't do that anymore now. Um, that was years and years ago. But now we just create stories that are that interesting resourceful different or fun that journalists link to them and, and cover them for free yeah brilliant excellent i was i thought given that your pr on this side and seo on the other side yeah. that that was going to be the answer um cool um and we've got um so we, we, this maybe this was covered by the other um question but we've had someone say um what about in the US? It, typically, there's a, it, often you'll get journalists pushbacks by pushback by saying it's not their beat, or they've already got staffers writing that stuff. So, I, mean, you, I mean, it sounds to me like you just move on, pitch it to someone else, right? Yeah, you do. You just move on and pitch it to somebody else, or try to find a different hook. Um, one thing that I will say about the US, it is quite different um, over in the US. Um, more and more stories are being correct, like Corona heavy, so they're more focusing on Corona led stories just because the numbers out there are extremely high. Um, so any sort of kind of fluffy content is not as much of a priority over in the US. And um, the sort of things that they like to see though um, are survey data pieces um, that give something different that the journalists more than likely won't already be covering. So if you've got any sort of data that you can gather that journalists clearly haven't got, you have, yeah. um, then that, that'll work. Cool, excellent, excellent, excellent. We've had a question about um, how to create a story from a different angle and then um, uh, uh, someone else has answered it in the chat with an idea for that specific business or that specific, uh, yeah, yeah, that specific business. So thanks for that, Nicola and Lily. Um, if we get a chance, we'll, we'll cover that in a bit more detail, um, but I, or we'll, we'll come to that. Let's move on to the, to the opportunity, the, the good news. So, well, frankly, you know what? Carrie Rose, this has all been good news. You, you are just magic. Um, but <laughs> There's opportunity, and this is funny, with Sanjay last week, it was all good news. He was talking about video, and I couldn't, I couldn't find any bad news in it. Maybe it's the sort of people that we're unlucky to be surrounded by at the minute are ridiculously optimistic, but very tired. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure too. <laughs> you and me both. Um, ladies and gentlemen who are on this call, uh, if you'd have joined us like five minutes early, Carrie was terrified because we were just both bitching. <laughs> but how knackered we were um, uh, and how difficult it is to run a business and do marketing right now. So um, uh, uh, we are tired, but we are also hopefully remaining inspired. So keeping on, keeping on. Um, uh, 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 what, what's the opportunity? Is there one now that's particularly generated by COVID? Actually, someone said uh, in the questions, um, are COVID stories getting higher ranking? Um, I suspect they probably are, but only because everybody's searching for it and it's being covered. But um, what is there an opportunity now that authentically and, and transparently we can use without being sort of hacks and um, ambulance chasers? Or actually, is it all about preparing for the future opportunity? Um, which do you think and how, how do we go about levering it? Um, bits of both. I know this obviously sounds kind of... This is a very, very brutal thing to say as a marketer, but there's opportunity in the fact that your competitors or a lot of competitors will be quiet. Um, maybe they've died off, do you know what I mean, um, in terms of their businesses. So they, or they haven't got the budgets to be able to do this. So there's the opportunity to kind of stand out and provide something different and, and kind of, I don't know, be the focus um, when it comes to your industry or expertise. But I guess the other sort of opportunities at the minute is, one thing that we're seeing, we're monitoring everything from um, sales to press, etc. And there's a bigger stance or opportunity for product. So product PR is getting picked up so much more and um, paid. Um, I see a lot of like social ads for like uh, random products. So I don't know about you, but a couple of weeks ago, I bought a, um, what do they call them? Where you like, oh, projector, like project films. Yep. 
Yeah, yeah I bought a project, projector the other day. People are buying some random shit. Like, that's <laughs> really, what's happening is there's a lot of people at home, they're bored, and they see some like a, an ad about some random shit or whatever it is, and they're like, oh yeah, I really want that, and they'll just buy it. Like, I've bought all sorts of crap in the last couple of weeks, but that's helping us. So there's one client that I had as an example, um, they're actually a bit fun. Um, they're in the sex industry, sex toys, and we couldn't necessarily create fluffy content for them at the minute um, when it comes to getting links through PR. But what we did is we we just PR'd their products. So, you know, we caught, we we created like the lockdown um, love kit or something, and we like yeah. literally got links to sex toys around how many people are buying sex toys right now. And we got links into those products and, and they started selling. So I think yeah. we made around £12,000 just, just PRing these sex toy products. And yeah. then misguided as an example and um, they completely no. at first nobody was buying clothes like why do you want clothes when you're sat in the house you're not going anywhere you're not going on nights out you're not going on holiday so we created a um loungewear what was it lockdown loungewear and it's just like what to wear and we even created like a working from home wear so it's like smart top and then pants on the bottom you know for like calls like this yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so really, I've got like just a pair of pants on down there, but and then just like a smart shit. Um, <laughs> we made, um, a product range um, for something like that. So products is an opportunity um, and it's direct sales as well. So although these links pass value, people click on these links and buy them. So we drove a shit ton of sales for these, you know, loungewear joggers and, and things like that because everybody wanted them because we're just sat home with people have got money, like the government are paying out kind of furlough pay and things like that. It's not as bad as the recession from years ago. Yeah. Um, there is there is help. So people are buying shit at the minute. So I guess that's another opportunity really is to use your PR skills to push random products in that sense. I, I, and that, both those campaigns are just fabulous. And the, the, yeah. the um, misguided one is just brilliant. And it's so cool that you, because normally you see that, I think we in the, uh, the non kind of, w w without our PR heads on, see that and we go, oh, well, that's clever. The, the, the uh, product team have come up with that. Yeah. And, it's, and it's and it's so often in those businesses that are really pushing through that it's i mean i see it all the time even in technical stuff like when we're putting in um a, 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 like new crms and um new operating systems for the whole business yeah. it's marketing that's driving it because they need to get the cut through they need to move forward yeah. so that's really cool and with the loungewear stuff everyone someone tweeted me oh you know miss gary clearly got a good budget to be able to do this we didn't spend a pound didn't even like those joggers already was on that website you know we yeah. just marketed it as if it was a loungewear for lockdown like it was just the marketing message it was they already existed on the website it was just the just the messaging so yeah. So, so um, there, there is an opportunity now. You've got to be creative. Um, uh, uh, it might be difficult to get that from every for, for every business. And for that, so for those that just to to reiterate um, what you were saying, for those that perhaps there isn't something there, there isn't a high demand for, um, or there isn't the budget for people to be able to buy it. Then actually, it's about just keeping on, keeping on, making sure the the the, the cars are clean. That's going to I'm, that's going to be stuck in my head. That analogy. yeah, the cars are clean, and like the farmer guy, like he just yeah. like like lambs and things like that there is opportunity like people more and more people are spending time on their phones on their screen and more people are reading the news so they're just sat like scrolling through and they want inspiration give them inspiration maybe you've got maybe you're doing some PR on a hotel or a holiday destination like people can't go on holiday but do you know what they can't friggin wait to they want yeah. to see your inspiration like it doesn't mean you need to stop it means you need to push even more because everyone's looking where to go as soon as then so it's keep on going really remain positive brilliant exactly exactly I've just looked at the clock and we are really to time it's like we rehearsed this <laughs> Um, uh, uh, we've got a couple of unanswered questions. Just one, uh, no, sorry, I think we've got one unanswered question, which is, um, would you run a campaign that had no relevance to a client and, and wouldn't generate click-throughs just to generate backlinks? For example, he sees brain, this person sees brain teasers a lot, but they are completely irrelevant to the client. Is that something, I mean, is that something you'd advise? I, I, for me, I, it just seems like, no, do something better that gets you more coverage and better links, right? Yeah, exactly. Relevance is a big thing. We actually won a big, big client recently um, because they used to work with an agency, an amazing agency, and got thousands and thousands of authority links, because, but the content was just not relevant and it did not move the needle. But I, I think they must have spent hundreds and hundreds of thousands of pounds with this agency and it did not move the needle because it weren't relevant. 
So yeah, yeah. relative is massive right now. And also one thing, and this is my theory, and I swear it'll come, it'll come true. Um, but one thing that all of these studies don't take into consideration is clicks. So how many people are clicking on those links? So like people might think Forbes is an authority link, but I've spoke about this before where I once built a link from Forbes to my client's website. And when I looked into Google Analytics to see how many people clicked from Forbes to my website, three, three people clicked on that link. Whereas when I got a link from Manchester Evening News, it drove 800 people. I Google at the minute doesn't necessarily kind of count them. Um, I guess historically people kind of say, you know, the more traffic, et cetera. Um, but yeah, I think engagement and social shares and stuff is going to be a big part of that. So when you mention this relevant content and things that creating content that people will click on, absolutely, because that's going to what that's going to make you stand out to the other agencies that can't do that. Yeah, brilliant, excellent. Um, I, uh, you're you're fairly active on social media, right? So um, yeah, yeah. I've just put your um, uh, details up on the screen. If you need to get in touch with Carrie to carry on the conversation. Um, uh, uh, there's she's on Twitter, she's on LinkedIn, um, but you could search for Rise at Seven. Uh, they appear. If you want to talk to me, if um, you don't have enough bald old white men in your life, um, I'm also on social media. I am not as good at this as Carrie. Um, next week we have Katie Roberts, the client development manager from Noise Little Monkey, um, who selling today uh, is going to talk to us about how to sell when no one's buying um and how marketing and sales teams can work together to do that um in two weeks we've got crystal carter from um, optic solutions she's the senior digital strategist she's going to be talking about lock tech lockdown content ideas for the win um uh, uh, it might be a slightly different title uh, if you enjoyed this please go to uh the to register for the the um chat that me and katie are having um or me and crystal are having at the link you can see on your screen um, and please in future um, go ahead and share us and like us on and subscribe to stuff because uh, this is really useful and I think people like you um, uh, uh, might benefit from it. If we didn't get a chance to answer your question um, I apologize. We really appreciate you coming along but more than anything um, we really appreciate the staggeringly wonderful Carrie Rose for joining us. Um, if we could do applause, I'd ask to do applause. There's lots of nice uh, comments going on in the uh, chat, so we appreciate that. Um, Carrie, thank you so much, mate. Thank you, um, thank you for having me. I look forward to having a drink and arguing about backlinks and other authority shit with you um, when this is all over. Thanks, mate. Amazing, thank you. See you everyone. Bye, 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 bye. Saying bye for a long time because I don't know how to end this. There it is. See you, Carrie.